Have you ever wondered how environmentally friendly or destructive your favorite crypto is? In this video, I do a deep dive on many of the projects in the Crypto Top 20 to find which ones are the most energy efficient. There are a few projects that I left out, like stablecoins and tokens that run on top of other blockchains which I'm already speaking of, and a few projects where I couldn't find reliable information. All in all, I have 11 cryptos to explore with you, and I'm excited to get started. If you like the content, smash that thumbs up button and don't forget to subscribe. It really helps out the channel a lot. Now let's get right into it. All right, so I'm going to work backwards and start with the most energy inefficient chains and work my way towards the most efficient. At the end, I'm also going to compare each network under the hypothetical that each of these networks take over the financial system. That'll be worth a watch, so make sure to stay until the end. Of course, by no surprise, ranking dead last is Bitcoin. By some estimates, the Bitcoin network consumes roughly 1,200 kilowatt hours of energy per transaction. Now to put this into perspective, the average US household consumes roughly 29 kilowatt hours per day. Let me just say that one more time. The Bitcoin network consumes 1,200 kilowatt hours of energy per transaction where the average household consumes just 29 kilowatt hours of energy per day. That means at Bitcoin's current usage, roughly 300,000 transactions a day, it consumes as much energy as roughly 12 million homes over the course of one day. That's insane. That's equivalent to the same energy consumption as the entire country of Sweden. Next up is Ethereum. The ETH blockchain currently consumes roughly 179 kilowatt hours of energy per transaction. This is still pretty bad. Though ETH 2.0 will theoretically fix this, it's undeniable that Ethereum is also quite an energy hog. At current usage levels, roughly 1.3 million transactions a day, the Ethereum network has the same daily energy consumption as roughly 8 million homes. Although that's better than Bitcoin, that is still very atrocious. Now next on our list, third to last, is Litecoin. For those that don't know, Litecoin, or LTC, was one of the original crypto projects dating all the way back to 2011 attempting to be the silver to Bitcoin's gold, with the goal of being faster and cheaper than Bitcoin. Litecoin is much more energy efficient than the prior two proof-of-work cryptos I just mentioned, Bitcoin and Ethereum, using just 18.5 kilowatt hours per transaction. Litecoin, however, only processes about 125,000 transactions a day, but still manages to consume as much energy as 80,000 homes per day. Now the next may be shocking to some, but the fourth to worst is Cardano. Cardano is vastly better than the three I just mentioned before but is still leagues behind the ones I have yet to mention. ADA uses roughly 0.5 kilowatt hours per transaction. Currently, Cardano processes about 270,000 transactions per day. Now that's roughly the same energy consumption as 4,700 homes. Now the next on our list is Dogecoin. Yes, somehow Dogecoin is better for the environment than Cardano. Pretty crazy. Regardless, each Doge transaction consumes about 0.12 kilowatt hours of energy. However, since no one is actually using Dogecoin, its blockchain only processes about 24,000 transactions per day, which is the equivalent daily energy usage to about 100 homes. So even though nobody's using the blockchain, it's still pretty bad when you compare it to the ones I'm about to tell you. Next on our list is Ripple, XRP. Now XRP is super efficient, but it's not the best. XRP uses just about 0.008 kilowatt hours per transaction, 
That's 15 times better than Dogecoin. XRP processes roughly 840,000 transactions per day, which means Ripple consumes about as much energy daily as 230 homes. Moving along brings us to Polkadot. Polkadot is 10 times more energy efficient than Ripple with just 0.0008 kilowatt hours of energy used per transaction. However, it's the least used blockchain out of any of the ones on this list, averaging just about 12,000 transactions per day. Next up is a layer two Ethereum scaling solution, Polygon. Although this is much more energy efficient, Layer 2 solutions, in my opinion, are band-aids for a poorly designed Layer 1. Layer 2 solutions usually increase scalability, but at the cost of security and decentralization. Regardless, Matic consumes just 0.0007 kilowatt hours of energy per transaction, with roughly 3 million transactions happening every day. This equates to roughly the same daily energy consumption as 72 homes. Now in third place, we have Solana. Solana consumes about 0.0005 kilowatt hours per transaction. There is a caveat though. Solana claims to support a TPS transactions per second in the tens of thousands, but that claim seems to be pretty misleading. The point in which a chain loses consensus, crashes, or otherwise must be halted is the actual throughput, and for Solana, that number is roughly 2,000 TPS, of which only 350 would be counted on most normal blockchains, because Solana, in my opinion, deceitfully includes validator consensus messages in its inflated TPS data. So taking this next set of data with a grain of salt, the Solana Block Explorer claims to be processing over 100 million transactions per day. At current pace, if we believe their transaction throughput, Solana uses as much energy daily as roughly 2,500 homes. Now in second place, we have Elrond. Elrond uses just 0.0002 kilowatt hours of energy per transaction, which is two and a half times more efficient than Solana. Elrond currently doesn't have much usage, averaging only about 52,000 transactions a day. This means currently, Elrond's energy consumption is too low to really calculate or compare. One great thing about Elrond, however, is that they teamed up with Offsetra to raise money for certified carbon reduction projects. Elrond is the second blockchain to pledge to be carbon negative through such offsetting actions. Now this brings me to the big winner. Coming in at number one is the one and only Algorand. Algorand uses just 0.0000008 kilowatt hours of energy per transaction. Now for those following along, I know there's a lot of zeros. To put this another way, Algorand is 25 times more energy efficient than Elrond, 62.5 times more energy efficient than Solana, 22 million times more efficient than Ethereum, and 147 million times more energy efficient than Bitcoin. Out of the 11 blockchains mentioned, Algorand processes the third most transactions a day, behind Matic and Solana, though Solana numbers are untrustworthy in my opinion. Algorand processes roughly 1.5 million transactions per day, which gives it the same environmental impact as less than half of one home per day. Think about that. Half of one home per day powers the Algorand blockchain. Algorand was also the first blockchain to commit to being carbon negative, teaming up with Climate Trade to purchase carbon credits on chain to offset its carbon footprint. Now here comes the fun part. There are roughly 1 billion credit card transactions per day. How much energy would each of these blockchains use if they replaced the current credit card payment rails? I'll tell you, I did the math and for some of these blockchains, it's not pretty. In 11th place, Bitcoin would consume 40.5 billion homes worth of energy per day if it processed a billion transactions like the credit card industry. 
Ethereum would consume the equivalent daily energy consumption of 6.2 billion homes. That's insane. Litecoin would equate to 640 million homes per day. Cardano would equate to 17.2 million homes per day. Dogecoin, 4.2 million homes per day. Ripple, 273,000 homes per day, getting a little better. Polkadot would equate to 28,000 homes per day, getting a lot better. Polygon would equal the same as 24,000 homes per day, we're getting there. Solana would be similar to the energy consumption of 18,000 homes, okay. Elrond would be similar to the energy consumption of 7,000 homes per day. Now Algorand is the clear winner. If Algorand became the global network for payment processing and consumed the 1 billion daily transaction volume of the credit card industry, it would only equate to 276 homes worth of energy per day. Compare that to the 40 billion of Bitcoin. That's just insane. Doing this research, I had a hunch Algorand would be number one, but I truly didn't know how far ahead Algorand was to its peers in this regard. Then I researched and crunched the numbers and was delighted to find out that my favorite blockchain was by far and away the best blockchain for the environment. Most of these blockchains would be extremely costly to the world if they became the global payment processors. That's why it's impractical for most of the chains I just mentioned to become the global infrastructure for payments. Not only would it be costly to the environment if some of these blockchains became the payment rails for the globe, but the credit card industry alone processes nearly a billion transactions per day. That's nearly 12,000 transactions per second. Most of these blockchains can't even handle that sort of transaction throughput. With Algorand upgrading from 1,100 TPS to eventually 46,000 TPS, along with its extremely eco-friendly technology and commitment to offsetting its negligible carbon footprint, Algorand, more than any blockchain I've researched, is poised to become the future of finance. This was a really exciting video. A lot of research went into it. A lot of number crunching went into it. So I appreciate everyone who stayed until the end. That's all for today. Please share this video far and wide so the world can see just how environmentally friendly or destructive their favorite project is. If you liked the content, which I hope you did, please smash that thumbs up button and consider subscribing. That'll just about wrap it up. I appreciate all of you and I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks.